joining our application portfolio management webinar today. I'm Deborah McGrath, Senior Technical Product Marketing Manager with ServiceNow, and I'll be hosting the webinar along with Connor Woodruff, who is a Senior Solution Consultant and Strategic Portfolio Management and APM Subject Matter Expert. Oops. While we're confident that most of what we'll be discussing and showing are features that are available as of our current San Diego release, Connor will also be highlighting a few upcoming new features. So we've included our safe harbor notice that this presentation may contain forward-looking statements that reflect the current beliefs of ServiceNow, all based on current information available. Actual results might differ materially and should not be relied upon in making purchasing decisions. Before we begin this webinar, I'd also, Connor, next slide, thanks. I'd also like to invite you all to join us on the last Thursday of every month when we present a webinar on new strategic portfolio management capabilities or enhancements to existing applications. And our next webinar will be on Thursday, August 25th. The topic is product management and how ServiceNow supports it. And you'll be able to view this webinar again and access any of our pre other previous last Thursday's webinars on demand from the SPM forum at community.servicenow.com. And I'm going to post a link in the chat session so you'll all know exactly where that is. Um, and as always, we'll save a few minutes at the end for Q&A. So welcome, Connor. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, hey, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about application portfolio management. Uh, specifically what the problem statement is and how our application solves that. So really what we found in the marketplace over the past 10, 20 years is there's been a massive growth in technology. So application portfolios have grown exponentially, but there hasn't been a lot of governance around that. So we've led to three core issues. One is high cost due to poor visibility. Every VP with the credit card is going out and purchasing applications. Uh, without really being aware of what they already own. As a result, we get redundant applications, as well as not a lot of context in terms of the infrastructure that's providing that. Additionally, and really as a result of that, we get poor business alignment. So we, of our application portfolio, don't really know what are the critical applications and how they support our business capabilities. Beyond that, there's not a lot of forward planning in terms of the roadmap and how you're going to continue supporting this application portfolio. And then lastly, and really a culmination of those two items, is we're increasing risk to the business from a technology perspective. We're getting all these old legacy platforms that either aren't being managed or don't have infrastructure mapping, so you don't get a clear idea of what the technology risk is. So you get to a point where not only are we paying for redundant applications that aren't used or aren't necessary. You don't really know the full scope of your application inventory and what the support structure is. And then finally, you're putting the business at risk by increasing the amount of end-of-life technology and technical debt. So the way I like to describe application portfolio management is that ultimately it's a way to identify opportunities. This could be an opportunity to rationalize your application portfolio. It could be reducing technical debt, or maybe it's just determining you have a gap in your business capabilities and how you serve the business. So what this slide runs through is really some core use cases, not just within APM, which is focused on the left here, but even as a platform, what ServiceNow does to enhance the application portfolio management capability. So on the strategic side, as I said, APM is really a way to identify opportunities. Firstly, we have the ability to assess application health and value. Now, if any of you are familiar with Gartner's time model, so where you plot out your applications that perform the same function on a bubble chart where you're looking at uh, technical, or sorry, you're looking at business value and then architectural fit, and then you decide whether you toler tolerate, eliminate, migrate, um, or invest. That's really what we're supporting here. And you can configure that in terms of how you want. But one of the major advantages of being on the ServiceNow platform is in all likelihood, you're running a lot of these other processes in ServiceNow. So we're not just looking at an assessment. You know, in other systems, if you don't have the CMDB there or you don't have your service management there, then you're not getting a lot of good data. It's really just an opinion. However, we tie into the other areas of the platform. So for example, 
if we're aligning to our ITSM activities, we could create a stability score based off the total change hours or maybe the number of incidents per user. So by tying into other areas of the platform, whether it's service management, uh, vulnerability management, integrated risk management, uh, whatever else, we can pull that data in as inputs in order to assess the application's health and value. Next, on the subject of technical debt, we're able to pull in data inputs from our asset management in order to determine what is the technology risk of our applications. So what that means is if I have a Oracle database, maybe it's uh, we purchased it in 2016, that's a pretty old version. In all likelihood, it's past its end of life or end of extended vendor support. So as a result, and we tie down into our asset management, into our CMDB, we really get the full picture in terms of, hey, are these technologies being supported? And are we presenting a risk to the business? Now, this is really powerful because now not only am I reactive, but I can also be proactive and look into the future and eliminate the risk before it even comes to fruition. Lastly, we have the ability to assess business capabilities and align applications to those. So this is more of an enterprise architecture function where we wanna look at anything and everything the business is doing. When we say business capability, we're not just saying business facing. This could be sales, could be marketing. However, it could also be IT security or IT services. So it's really everything your business is doing and we allow you to evaluate that against people, process, and technology. So this really expands the scope of APM beyond just the technology viewpoint, but you may find we have a gap in the capability in that we don't have good resources for it, or we don't have good process around it. So that helps you eliminate red herrings where technology might actually not be the issue. So at its core, those are the uh, main APM use cases in terms of identifying opportunities. But for a lot of customers, just having an application inventory is a huge win. Knowing what's out there, knowing who owns it, and building process around it. And one of the benefits of ServiceNow is that since it's one platform, one architecture, one data model, all of this work you're doing in other areas of the platform, like service management, like the data foundation with their CMDB discovery and service mapping, all of that comes together to build a level of governance and accuracy around your application inventory. So those are the core use cases. That's not to say that's everything that's offered with an APM, but those are just a few ways that you can identify opportunities. So now I'm gonna jump into the platform and show how those use cases look uh, in reality. So what we're looking at here is our uh, application portfolio management homepage. This is a portal view that typically enterprise architects would interface with. And you'll see we have the four uh, key components of enterprise architecture. We have our business portfolio. This is where we're gonna look at our business capability map and see the health of our capabilities and how services and applications align to that. We have our information portfolio. This is where we can get into a data catalog and data management. So for example, if I have a information object of customer credit card information and that's stored on one of my applications, I know that rolls up to a data domain of PCI, or maybe it's health information that rolls up to a data domain of HIPAA. Uh, so this allows me to drive some of those uh, compliance processes and to really understand, okay, what's my application inventory, but also what data is that consuming? Next, we have the application portfolio. This is where we'll be doing our analysis and comparing uh, redundant applications to determine which we wanna keep as the best in class. And then lastly, we have the technology portfolio where we jump into the technology portfolio management and leverage what we're doing in asset management in order to determine a technology risk. So to begin, I'm gonna jump into the business portfolio here. So I'm gonna to go to my hierarchy map. And within this view, you can see we have a full tree structure of our business capabilities. So if I dig in here, we can see our market and sell products and services, we'll dig down and I can go to sub capabilities. Now, if I click into any of these capabilities here, you'll notice I have a score associated with it. Now that score is coming from people, process and technology. Additionally, if you're doing strategic portfolio management, 
we can see any projects or demands and total investment do dollars aligned to our capabilities. We also can see any business applications that are related to our capabilities. This is a top level capability. So in all likelihood, we're gonna be mapping to our lower levels. However, we're not gonna make you go through and crawl through a relationship map. We can also simply go to look at our indirect applications to see all of the applications related to sub capabilities. So to run through a use case of how this might be valuable, if we were to come in and crawl through our uh, business capability model, if we jump into manage information technology, we can see, hey, managing enterprise information, we've got a pretty low score there. And we have two applications that are aligned here. Let's click into that and see what's going on. So here we can see, all right, we have a people score of two. That's not great. A process score of three. And our technology is actually performing pretty well. And if I jump over into my business applications, we see that we have ServiceNow APM under evaluation. And then we have Informatica, which is doing you know, a pretty good job. So this is an example of how we're broadening the scope of APM beyond just the technology side. Instead, we've identified a red herring. We can go ahead and create a demand against this and then say, hey, you know what? We probably need an OCM effort to get platform adoption for this managed enterprise information capability. And you'll notice throughout the demonstration today, every single APM view will allow you to create a demand or a project. So that makes us beyond just a system of record, but also become a system of action. The final thing I'll share in this view is we're looking at more of a health and performance people process technology view. However, we can still tie into our asset management and determine what's the technology risk as they roll up to our capabilities. So now we're getting more of a technologist view of the capability structure. So that's all we'll show today for the business capabilities. However, now we're gonna jump into the application portfolio. So this is that Gartner time model type view I was mentioning before. Here we can see that we have all of our different application categories. Uh, that's ServiceNow terminology that essentially means the function that the application is providing. We could also group by application family, which would be akin to a publisher. And as we scroll to the right, we can see all the different types of indicators we can retrieve. And speaking to the power of the platform, we're looking at customer satisfaction from our services that are being provided. We can tie into our total change hours. We can get a total cost of ownership. We can determine usage from our CMDB. So you're really able to automate a lot of this information. And then you can identify opportunities what APM is good at. So if I scroll down here, we can see that I can filter this view. So maybe at a strategic level, we want to improve the customer experience. So as an enterprise architect, I'm going to say, hey, do we have any applications out there with a customer satisfaction score of less than three? And when I apply that filter, now we have a much more targeted list of my application categories. So if I click into one of these, we'll go into IT portfolio management. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear that filter just so we have a bigger picture of the world. Now you're seeing we get that model where we can say, hey, by the simple fact that I'm seeing five bubbles here, that's telling me we have redundancy. All of these applications are doing IT portfolio management. Uh, there could be a valid reason, but more likely than not, I probably need to remove some of these. So right now we're looking at a business value versus functional fit. And really we have a Z-axis too in the form of bubble size. So if we hover over, we can see, hey, ServiceNow PPM is doing pretty well. We can also, however, get into additional indicators. And we have an indicator framework that allows you to build your own scoring profile. And that can be as complex as a custom script and calculation. We can do performance analytics or reporting over time, um, or it could be a simple query of your CMDB. However, as I look through here, our chart here gave us one view of the world, but maybe I wanna look at usage score versus customer satisfaction. And for my bubble size, I wanna see business value. Now we're seeing a very different view of the world. So as an enterprise architect, I can slice and dice this information how I want to figure out what I need to do. So now we're seeing, hey, this ServiceNow application has a really high customer satisfaction score. 
but not a lot of usage. That tells me that maybe we need an OCM effort. We also have this legacy portfolio management application that has low usage and low customer satisfaction. To me, that's a great candidate for retirement. And if I click into any of these bubbles, we're going to launch into our demand management. So our demand management is going to allow us to really take action on these initiatives. And this is going to flow into the same exact demand pipeline as any of, other, any of your other demands in the system. So here I could say we're migrating to an application or retiring it. Um, I can go and fill in any of this additional information on demand and then ultimately kick this into my demand pipeline. So the last view I'll show in the APM portal is the technology portfolio. This is where we're starting to dive into our asset management. So here we see a timeline view where at the top we have our business application. Right now you're only seeing high risk because I filtered it that way. Uh, that's why you're seeing a lot of red popping out. But underneath that we see, okay, what are our deployments of that application? Uh, so we have our application services. I'd be like your dev, test, prod environment, regional deployments. And underneath that, we see the hardware and software assets that are supporting this. So here's an Oracle database server. If I hover over this lifecycle, we're seeing that we're in end of extended support, and that's pretty high risk. So now we're getting a risk score associated with our overall application, depending on the risk of each of the individual environments. Now note that this publisher lifecycle is automatically pulled in from our content library and asset management. So as you turn on different parts of the platform, you're really enabling and enhancing the other processes. Now, also in that vein, we're able to see any projects or demands that are built against that application. So this gives me a really good contextual view of the world where I can see, hey, we have really high technology risk, but maybe I have a project out there to go ahead and retire this application. Or it could be the opposite. Maybe I have you know, 17 projects here, but I'm in really high risk. Maybe we ought to delay those and create a project to re-architect this and move to more modern technology standards. So that's just one example of how we can be proactive and get a full picture of the world beyond these different processes. Now, this is more of an application-focused view. I could also look at a software-centric view and flip this view, this model on its head. So now instead of looking at my, uh, my applications, I can say, hey, we have this Microsoft R server that's high risk. I need to get all these applications off of that. Maybe we've decided we have a technology standard of moving to Oracle servers. As a result, I may wanna go ahead and create a project or demand to say, hey, on each of these applications, we need to re-architect and get off these, these uh, older technology models or software models. So just a couple examples how we continue to identify opportunities and we're able to be a system of action, not just a system of record. So jumping back to the, the presentation here, what I was just going through was more of a APM view of the world, or sorry, it was more of a uh, enterprise architect view of the world. Now we're gonna change personas a bit and jump into the application owner's view. So we had a new uh, feature that came out with the San Diego release, it's called digital portfolio management. And what we found that whether it's a service owner, a product owner, an application owner, a lot of those personas are really doing the same sort of activities. So what we found is, and we've grouped these together into the idea of a solution owner, we're able to pull data from all these different areas of the platform and really get kind of a full value stream picture. So whether it's strategic portfolio management, where we can do road mapping, idea management, demand management, project management, or agile delivery, within application portfolio management, our app owners want to see the risk on their applications or the roadmap. Within service management, we want to see our availability as well as our customer satisfaction. And then that whole data foundation is built on operations management. So in a lot of uh, previous releases, your application owners didn't necessarily have a great, good user interface to engage. However, now with digital portfolio management, 
I almost see it as an application owner's workspace. So to jump into what this might look like, for example, now I'm in the persona of an application owner and we see I have a e-commerce services and applications portfolio. Now this portfolio is not just made of business applications, it's really a combination of services and applications. And if I jump into one of my applications here, now I got a workspace in order to manage this across the entire value stream, whether it's planning, you know, building ideas and demands, figuring out what's next, building any in-flight projects or agile development, running what's the availability of my applications and the service management, or even jumping into our integrated risk management. So from this view as an application owner, I can see you know, some high level information here. I can see any open demands, ideas. However, I can even jump into an interactive roadmap. So now we're really giving your app owners the ability to plan out to the future and figure out you know, what's coming up. So this is an example of the alignment planner workspace. And we have a mixture of demands, epics, and projects here. In the spirit of getting everything in one place, we're not restricting just demands and projects. We can also store our agile epics. Now within this view, we can slice and dice this. Right now I'm looking at uh, broken down by work item. I could also say, hey, I wanna see how these different initiatives are aligning to our strategic goals. So this is just a quick example of how we can start to jump into road mapping and really start to give back to your app owners. You know, the enterprise architects are dependent on a lot of the data inputs your app owners give in order to make those strategic decisions. But now we're giving them a space where they can actually manage their work and plan out any key events or milestones that are coming up in the future. So a very quick run through of our uh, app, of our digital portfolio management here. So this is the plan tab. We're able to see our demands. We can do a roadmap. We can build a backlog. However, we're also starting to expose some of that technology portfolio management to our app owners. In the build tab, we can see in-flight projects and epics. We can also see a breakdown of the statuses of those projects and overdue events. In our run tab, we'll get into the uh, number of incidents, problems, and changes, as well as the technology risk in the deployments of our application. So the business application is more of a conceptual record. However, now we're able to drive down into our production deployments or dev test and see how they're doing from a service management perspective. And then lastly, we have the ability to tie in our GRC risk and compliance and get some data points from that as well. So digital portfolio management is broader than just APM, but to me, this is giving your application owners a workspace where they can really leverage the power of the platform and understand the full value stream against their applications. So with all that being said, I will pass it back to you, Deborah. Yeah, you know, thank you, Connor, for that really informative overview and demo of the strategic and operational cases of APM, and also for that special additional demo on digital portfolio management through the eyes of an application owner. And I'm seeing this slide, and I understand, Connor, you'll now also be able to give us a sneak peek at a few important new APM features, right, planned for our upcoming Tokyo release? That's right, Deborah. Awesome. So... What we have coming up is some enhancements to some of those views I, I just showed. I was showing it in San Diego, so this will come in Tokyo when some of these features will come available. First, we have the ability to have a technology reference model. Uh, another way I like to describe this is technology standards. So what this allows you to do, and I gave an example during the demonstration, if we have a need for a server, or if we have a server that's supporting an application, that's, that's an example of a technology model or a product model. So what this allows you to do is your enterprise architects can say, hey, you know what? We're only supporting this version of this technology, whether it's the 2020 version, 2019. It could also be the vendor. So if we say Oracle versus Microsoft versus whoever, this allows your enterprise architects to actually guide the technology management and make sure that your application portfolio is aligning to a certain standard. 
Next, we have a Lucid chart integration coming out. So a lot of our customers, we found that they're doing their architectural modeling within Lucid charts. And we wanted to make sure that we were exposing that within application portfolio management. So our APM solution has always been all about identifying opportunities. However, we understand that your architects are probably doing more um, activities around future state planning, architectural models. And this is a way for you to get access to a really powerful external system, which is Lucidchart, and to build those models while also bringing that back in the service now and storing that documentation on your business applications. And then lastly, all, all we'll really have time to tease is we have the architectural art artifacts. And this ties in directly to the, uh, to the Lucid Charts integration we're talking about in that if you have any sort of artifacts, uh, architecture guidance, uh, diagrams, we're now letting you track versions and really do your document management against your applications and services in order to make sure that you have that information handy for your application owners. So I know that was a quick run through. There'll be some publicly released uh, Tokyo release information when we get to early access in a few weeks here, but that's just a little tease of what's coming up in the new Tokyo release for APM. Wow, better insights into standards and software models, artifacts and versioning and cost savings. Um, a lot of added value there that should make life a lot easier for the enterprise architects and the application owners in our audience. Thanks again, Connor, for that sneak preview. And we're gonna turn now to our Q&A. We have had a few questions that have popped in. Um, I wanna hit one right off the bat that just in case um, people didn't understand that, I answered it already, but it was a question about APM, PPM, SPM. So just to clarify, recently we changed our business unit name from IT business management to strategic portfolio management. Um, we're not just an IT solution. We really span the entire enterprise. So that's the reasoning for the name change. But strategic portfolio management, the business unit at ServiceNow supports both PPM, project portfolio management, as well as application portfolio management. Um, so just to clarify on that. Connor, another question came in. I'm going to read it to you. Where do the application categories come from? Do I have to specify, specify them per application? Yeah, great question. So the application categories are a separate table. We actually have two tables. Um, so it's a one level hierarchy. We have application category groups and application categories. As I mentioned in the demonstration, it basically means what is the application doing? What is its function? And you reference that application category table on an app by app basis. Awesome. Um, I have another question, and this has to do with software asset management, and we integrate um, seamlessly with our SAM solution. So the question is about using APM TPM with SAM. Can you use APM technology portfolio management, even if you do not have software asset management installed? You sure can. And all those tables are available to you just through the platform. However, when you enable software asset management, it really makes that more scalable because instead of manually needing to go to the publisher's websites and find their life cycles or to put internal life cycles against those, you can really just rely on the content library and the normalization process that's discovered through the software asset management in order to populate that for you. So you, you can certainly manually build out uh, technology maps and the uh, asset life cycles if you want to. However, the asset management just makes it scalable and so you can really have that across the whole enterprise. Thank you, Connor. Um, and I'd like to, that's really all the time we have for today. If we don't have any more questions um, on this. Oh, wait a minute, there, there is one more question. What place does software like a web browser or PDF viewer have in the application portfolio management? Yeah, great, great question. So that, that gets into the common services data model. And really you have to ask yourselves what's worth tracking within APM. Like for example, I've heard customers ask, hey, we have this Excel macro that you know whole business units depend on. Is that a business application? 
So that's kind of where we get into the uh, more of an art than a science part of the common services data model. But I would say general guidance is if you have an application that is important enough to provide a business capability and it has its own ownership and support structure, that probably qualifies as a business application. Perfect. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and we're right at the uh, half hour, which is the end of our webinar. Really appreciate everybody joining today. Um, again, thank you so much, Connor, for the great um, demos and presentation and discussion. Thanks to everyone, our last Thursday's audience. We always appreciate you coming. And just a reminder, our next webinar is Thursday, August 25th on product management. We hope we'll see you all there. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>